And good morning, it's the last Saturday, the last Saturday in July. How did we get this quick? So we're now closer to Christmas, next Christmas, than we are to last Christmas. Unbelievable. Time is just flying by. Good morning to you, and especially good morning this morning to someone who has managed, I don't know how he's managed, he's actually managed to get up in time to see the show live this morning. Young Brandon in sunny, sunny Croydon. Good morning. How have you managed to do that? God's sake, I can't believe. Is it? But the funny thing is, I've got this message. He's already tired. I don't know how, how long he's been up, but uh, he sends a message in already um, and says, good morning. Just listen to some of the warm up music from this morning's show. Thank you. Because we do a little bit of warm up music. Those of you watching the show live. And how do you know if it's live? Well, it's just gone 12 o'clock on Saturday. The was it the 26th on Saturday, the 26th of July, 2014. If that's the UK time, if that's the time and day where you are now, then you are indeed with us live. OK, boys and girls. And you can join in live. Uh, by Skype, if you've got Skype, the Skype username is Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N, right, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N, that's the Skype username, there's a phone in number as well, if you want to phone into the show, 020 8133 6358, 020 Eight one double three six three five eight. Let me see if I can get that to come up on the. Um, I, I keep forgetting to get that text up, don't I? Somehow, um, text one two three, and there it is. Okay, if you're watching the live show, you should see a little bit of text come up there with my name and uh, phone number on it. Whether you're watching live or watching a recording of the show or listening to a recording of the show, you can join in by email. The email address is Chris at United kingdomtalk.co.uk chris at united kingdomtalk.co.uk and uh brandon says how i said to him how fantastic this is on the, the facebook message thing and he says i says how fantastic that you are with us and then then after telling me that he that you know that he was already there he then writes well i was planning to have a little sleep i mean has, has my clock gone wrong is it actually 12 o'clock in the afternoon or what? I mean, you've only been up 15 minutes, haven't you? I was planning to have a little sleep, but I can tune in for about 10 minutes. Oh, blimey. I mean, I know you're only 18, but Christ, how much sleep does someone need? You've only been up a few minutes, haven't you? Even I wasn't that bad as a teenager. Christ almighty. And then he says, I might try and stay for the whole show. Oh, thanks very much. Really appreciate it. You know, it's like you're doing me a favour by being there, isn't it? He says, see how you behave. What do you mean how I behave? What does that mean? How I behave? Well, you should have seen some of the youngsters your age in a club where I was DJing last night. Well, they didn't know how to behave. Rude. Rude. That's what they are way they talk to people. Hope you're not like that. Oh, there were some crap requests last night. I was DJing at a place called Colours, which is in uh, Basildon, in Essex. You might, you actually seen, the club was uh, actually on that awful programme, The Only Way is Essex, about, ooh, about a year ago, I suppose, with an awful Bobby dancing. <laughs> and... Some of the requests would let's just like really heavy rap stuff. <coughs> or they would ask for something from Beyonce. You're right, Terry. Terry H is with us this morning in Leeds. Morning, Terry. Morning, Daniel. And they might ask for something from, from Beyonce, but it will be a track from the album that no one else knows. Now, what was it she asked for? Moving by Be Have you heard of that one? Moving by Beyonce. That was never... And you say to them, that wasn't in a church. Oh, it was. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't in... A yes, it was definitely in the charts. Now, is it in the charts now? Oh, I think so. But now, as soon... That's their, that's their fatal error, you see. That is their fatal error. When they say it's in the charts now, because I then go, oh, let's have a quick look. And I go over to my computer and I type in BBC charts, right? And where's my air conditioning thing? It's a bit, oh, it's getting a bit cold in here now. 
shall I, shall I uh, turn that off for a while? And I look at the chart, I said, no, doesn't seem to be in there. Oh, what charts you... And then they come back with, oh, what charts you looking at? And I look at them, well, the BBC ones have got... Oh, no, not that chart. Do you know what I mean? Have you ever heard of Mercy by Beyonce? I've never even heard of it. And that, that, that often happens. As you know, it's not an unusual thing anymore for that to happen. People seem to assume that you can play any record at all that they want. But, you know, it has to fit in with the night. And I've done it before. You know, I've, pl- I, I, I've done occasionally played a record, or you don't even call them records anymore, you call them songs. Don't you? I've played a song that I think, you know, this really doesn't fit in, but they want it, I'll put it on. You put it on, and it clears the floor. And they step, and before, and before, if you decide not to play, I'm, oh, I can't play that. It doesn't really fit. Oh, everyone will love it. Everyone will come and dance to it. No, they won't. And indeed, they don't. When I do do it, <laughs> and sometimes when they come up and say, "Have you got that?" No, 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 I haven't got that one. And it like that, and walk off. Bloody rude. I hope you're not like that. Um. Uh, Brandon, when eventually you come to one of my mega, mega nights. Cool. Anyway, he carries on. Question. Oh, hang on. Daniel wants to know, is this the first time Brandon has tuned in? I hope he's not expecting too much. I think, but I'm sorry, Daniel. I'm surprised. You're, haven't you got something better to do, Daniel? Like the washing up? Or have you got a lady to do that? I bet you don't even do your own washing up, do you? Give it to the wife. Ugh. Do you give it to the children? He's got children. Daniel gives it to them as, now what are they called? Chores. Do you give the, oh, you, your chores today to do my washing up. I bet you sit there in one of those dad type armchairs, don't you? With the remotes on either side of the arm. Screaming out to your children. Oi, go and get me a cup of tea. Go and get me another can of tenants from the fridge. Are you one of those dads? I bet you are. Huh? Mrs, where's my dinner? And then it sits on your lap and then you finish your dinner. Come and take the tray out. Are you one of those dads? Aren't you awful? <laughs> hope you're not one of those dads who goes to the... Um, uh, I don't know if you've got daughters or sons or one of each or two of each or probably, you know, ten of each. You've got ten of each children. Like, you know, like those people in the, um, in the Daily Mail. £120,000 a year benefit paid out. I've got 15 kids and I'm not stopping and no one's going to tell me. Are you one of those dads? <laughs> Daniel says Barry Manilow can clear a dance floor in seconds. How dare you? Not, not, with, a, not with a Barry Manilow fans that I know he can't. Excuse me. If you don't mind me saying so, how would you know you've never been to a Barry Manilow concert? We don't sit there. Well, my two aunts did. I was was quite embarrassed, to be honest. My two aunts came. I took them to the last Barry Manilow concert I went to, uh, which was was at the O2. Was that the Wembley one? No, the O2. And um, everyone was dancing. My two aunts just remained sitting down. I mean, if I didn't know what to look at, you know, I've... (laughs) <laughs> I'm just waiting for someone. Oh, who are those two people sitting down? And no one did, fortunately. I would have had to have denied all knowledge, you know, just like, just like, um, just like, uh, who is it? Peter in the Bible with Jesus, you know. When the cock crew three times, you will have denied me. Three times. People would have said, are they your two aunts? And I would have said no. And a little bit more dancing to Cobra Cabana. Are they your two aunts there? Someone would have said. And I would have said, oh, no, not, I don't know who they are. A little bit more dancing, maybe, to um, It's a Miracle. That's one of my favourite Barry Manilow tracks. It's a miracle. By the way, the uh, Barry Manilow picture will change for next Saturday. OK, this is the last time you'll see that one. And I'm surprised I'm surprised. Um, Daniel hasn't noticed. He usually notices things, but he hasn't noticed anything yet. I'm waiting for him to come up. With, uh, with with the question. Anyway, uh, and then, you know, might have a little dance to It's a Miracle, a true blue spectre girl, a miracle is you. I do that at karaoke nights, you know. I've got one tonight. Are you in London tonight? Come along to my karaoke night on this Saturday, the 26th of July, 2014, at the Lorry Arms in Shepherd's Bush Road in Hammersmith. Very close 
to Hammersmith Tube Station, free entry, 9pm to 1am. So I would be dancing for a third time uh, to that. And then some, even Barry Manilow might, might stop the song midway and say, who are those two ladies sitting down? Do you know them? And I would say, ooh, never seen them before, Barry. And then the cock would crow. And then I will feel all guilty, just like Peter did in the Bible when he denied Jesus. I see, I know everything, don't I? I know all religious things. OK, um, Daniel says he's got two girls and yes, they are my slaves. I knew it. I know you, uh, you are. Can you go and get my slippers? Can you go and get me a cigar? Can you go and get me a can of tenants out of all oh, those poor girls? I feel really sorry for them. And you shout at them. At least you haven't got boys. At least you're not one of those dads who stands round the corner of the football field screaming obscenities at their sons when they don't store, score a goal. I mean, they're just bullies, aren't they? Pathetic bullies. Anyway, back to uh, Brandon's messages here. Let me have a look here. Um, oh, he's not, he's not written anything for a few minutes. Are you still... Oh, he's probably fallen asleep. Have you fallen asleep, Brandon? Wakey, wakey! Have you fallen asleep? <laughs> he says, I've got a question to uh, start your show off today. How do you know who is with you? Well, I look around and nope, there's no one with me in here. No one with me, Brandon. That, that's the answer to your question. I mean, how do you usually know who's with you? That's the question. You know, do you look around and you're thinking, I don't know who's, is anyone with me? And you look around. Bit, no, you obviously don't because you wouldn't ask the question. What do you, so, oh, I understand. I know, I understand what you mean. So how do you know when you're asleep? Is that what you mean? How do you know who's around when you're asleep? Well, occasionally you do have to wake up, Brandon. It is necessary. <laughs> occasionally, oh, hang on a minute. I've done 14 minutes. Maybe you've gone back to sleep now, have you? I mean, I'm sorry to have interrupted your sleep with my little programme. It's not much to ask, is it? All I ask, just a small thing, just a trifle. As Ursula says in The Little Mermaid. Oh, that's a song I've started doing at karaoke as well. Poor unfortunate souls. Poor unfortunate souls in pain, in need. This one wants to look thinner. This one wants to get the man. Do I help them? Yes, indeed. Those poor unfortunate souls. Talking of poor unfortunate souls, Daniel says, stop banging on about the Bible. Well, read it then and I won't have to tell you about it. Idiot. He says, OK, what is the item of interest? It looks like a Disney snow globe. I'm glad you noticed it. Thank you. One moment, please. Oh, God. And let me tell you, this is really heavy. God knows how we got this from customs. <laughs> the bit of dust on... <laughs> oh, God, Brandon, can you come around and do some dusting, please? You like the cleaning, don't you? Right, so here is my love. Oh, I've just noticed something on the back of it. It's a mirror. Oh, a mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest? Of I'm not even going to ask because I know the answer is me. And that's it. Right, so I've got this Disney massive, very, very heavy. I mean, and it's really as heavy. It's a Disney snow globe. Only, is it a, yes, it is snow, hang on, and it's so heavy that you can't really shake the blooming thing, hang on a minute, let me shake it for you, shaker maker, well, hang on, let's get this up there, there we are, Disney snow globe, and on the front of it, those of you that are without vision, there are a few people that just listen to the show and do not watch, they cannot take my ugliness, isn't that right, girls and boys? You cannot take my ugliness, so you have to just listen. I understand that. Fair enough. You know, we cannot all be drop-dead, gorgeous, good-looking like Barry Manilow. <clears throat> and, and, and now, Justin Bieber. Bit of an arsehole. But he's looking quite good now, isn't he, boys and girls? I bet there's some fit ladies out there. I think he's gay as well. I think Justin Bieber's probably gay. 
I mean, he hasn't said anything about it. He looked, do you know, he looks at... Straight blokes don't look like that, do they? Do you know what I mean? They usually got a bit of a belly and a little bit unshaven and maybe wear, um, wear one of those hats, you know, those um, baseball caps and blue jackets. <laughs> do you know anyone like that? That's how straight blokes, blokes usually look. They don't look like Justin Bieber walking around with his top off all the time, looking buff. And he does look buff. Let's be honest, he looks buff. He's one of those sort of people that, how can you say this, you, you might spend a bit of time with, but you wouldn't really want to know. You know what I mean? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Anyway, so on this Disney, very, very heavy Disney snow globe, which... Now, let me think. Oh, yes, I remember. Someone bought this for me at Euro Disney. That's right. Lee. His name was Lee. <clears throat> and in the middle is one of the... Um... Now, that's not... Well, which... I think it's the Queen from Snow... I think it's the Queen from Snow White. She's the one in the middle, in the actual snow globe. And at the bottom, we have Captain Hook. We have the Queen from Sleeping Beauty. We have... Oh, that's that one from 1001 Dalmatians. 101 Dalmatians. And then there's another, like... Um, like a Sultan on the left-hand side. And that is my very... And, and there's a big, like, a devil on the top. So that is my... I'm going to put that back. Oh, I, did. I, I missed her then. And Ursula from Little Mermaid is at the bottom there. Ursula. Isn't it fantastic? I love this. <clears throat> and that, that is today's item of interest. Yes. Uh, Daniel says, uh, my wife collects Disney Winnie the, Winnie the Pooh. Well, she got lots of Winnie the Poohs. I do remember, actually. My mum used to collect things like that. Um... <clears throat> With that, you know, I'm, I'm not usually politically correct, but I suppose I'd better be this time. Uh, do you remember Golden Shred Marmalade? Oh, hang on a minute, it might be Robertson's. But anyway, they used to have um, gollies. Do you remember those? They were little, little statues, little gollies. And in all different situations, it was a band that you would collect. One would be playing a guitar... One would be holding a microphone and all lots of different ways. And you could buy a shelf and you, you, you would collect these with, um, I think it was either Robertson's Jam or Golden Shred Marmalade. And you would collect these little little models. All of, and, you know, we, we didn't think they were offensive at the time at all. We didn't collect them. So, oh, 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 look at all those. <laughs> no, it wasn't like that at all. We didn't find them racist or offensive. They were just collectible items, you know, like little models. A little bit like the... Like the models attached to that um, snow globe there. Of course, times have moved on, and, and of course, they're terribly racist and offensive. It never, never even occurred to me that it didn't actually occur to us that they were supposed to be representing black people. Not at all. But somewhere along the line, everyone went, oh, no, no, they're offensive. Oh, a bit, let's stop making those straight away. And then, then I think after that, I think after they'd done the gollies, they did, I think they did badges after that. But they, they weren't models. They, they were also gollies, but they were badges. And then the whole PC thing came on and everyone thought everyone was offended by everything. So that was the end of that. I mean, oh, God knows how many people I offend over the years. I really do. Um... <clears throat> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Brandon, oh there he is Good morning, there he is Brandon has now appeared on the Skype Is anyone going to call in today? I fancy a chat with someone Do call in, my Skype call in name is Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N or phone 020 8133 Terry H says, have you seen Tom Daly's new calendar? Only the front page. Only the front page, Terry. No doubt you'll be buying that and pinning that on your bedroom wall, won't it? Now, have, you, have you actually got, who's got pictures of, and posters and things on their bedroom walls? Anyone, anyone got that? Has anyone got any of those? 
I don't think I had any posters on my wall. My sister, um, my sister used to be a great fan of, and uh, get ready to be shock horror. Are you ready? Gary Glitter. Oh, she thought the world of him. He turned out to be a pedo, didn't he? Hey, is he in prison now? He, I'm sure he... Did he... I can't even remember now. I think he... Um, now, where was he? Was it Peru or Thailand or v Vietnam? That was it. Viet Wasn't he in Vietnam? He turned out to be a pedo. Anyway, he, she had all posters and, and record album covers on the wall and all that. Have, did you have any posters on your bedroom as a child, as a young person, not necessarily a child, as a young person, child, whatever. What sort of posters were, what posters did you have? I bet Daniel's the sort would have had, he would have cut out, because he I imagine Daniel to have been a bit tight when he was a child, not like to spend the old money, you know, and he would cut out page three of the sun and pin that on the wall. I bet there were loads of them. Now, who, who was your, actually, Daniel, who was your, who was your son page three girl? Was it Samantha Fox or was that a little bit was she a little bit a little bit past it by then, was she? Samantha Fox? I heard that she was a lesbian, is that right? Let me just write, let me just check that out for you. I'd like to get the information up. One moment, please. <clears throat> oh, oh, can't believe it. I've, I've got a Skype notification. Someone is now following me. How exciting. How many followers have I got now? 286. I mean they're falling over each other. <laughs> They're falling over each other to, to follow me this morning. They are. Now, hang on. Sam Fox. Oh, yeah. Hang on a minute. American pornograph. No, it's not that one. Oh, yes. Yes, she, she is. She's one that likes the girls. Did you know that? <coughs> I only found out the other day, to be honest. I think... Um, Angel, Angel is with us this morning. Good morning, Angel, who says, thought I would watch the show, then start getting ready for my party. Now, let me tell you, Angel. Oh, oh we've got to do happy birthday. Hang on a minute. Angel is celebrating her, is it 60th or 65th? <gasps> I hope I haven't got her. Uh, oh, I can't remember. One minute, one minute. Oh, 60th, 60th. See, I'm, you know, you're only eight years, seven years, not, what am I going to Eight Nine. Nine? Fifty-one. Nine. Yeah. You're only nine years older than me, Angel. And I've got to show you, um, Angel has sent in a little picture of a beautiful jasmine plant. Have a look at this. Look. Isn't that lovely? Oh, one minute. One minute. There we are. Isn't that beautiful? That is Angel's beautiful jasmine plant before her husband cut it down accidentally. <laughs> and it's dead. He thought he'd give it a little bit of a trim and then it's dead. Now you'd be getting, to, I mean, you know, it makes you wonder, you know, should I ever cut my hair again? Someone might cut it too much and it'll die completely. I've had my hair cut again. I'll have my hair cut weekly now. Weekly, weekly. <clears throat> so, um, uh, Angel writes, Hi Chris, I've been talking to my caterer for my party today, right, so Saturday, uh, to sort out the final arrangements. Only happening today. She's also doing the decorating, the balloons and all that. Oh my God. Oh, she's got a, a machine to blow the balloons up. Have you ever done that? Gone to a party or something like that and had to try and blow the balloons up. Oh, God, you've got no lungs left by the end of that, dear. Especially if you, just, if you smoke. You need a machine. And don't breathe the gas in. <clears throat> of course, the latest... Have you seen the latest thing that the youngsters are doing? They're breathing in laughing gas. But it's not safe. People are dying. I heard um, Steve Allen on the radio said that... Was it, it said 10 people have died so far from breathing in laughing gas? I'm not sure how it kills you. It's supposed to give you a high and it's all legal. You can buy it online. Amazon. eBay. Little, and they're like little canisters of stuff. Oh, how could you breathe that stuff in? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Um, 
Angel says, I hate being the centre of attention, so what on earth am I doing throwing myself a 60th birthday party? Oh, I know what you mean, dear. I can't stand it either. You know. The last thing I'd ever, ever want anywhere where I go day or night is to be the centre of attention. It's not my thing at all, Angel. I know exactly... Sorry? I know exactly where you're coming from. Anyway, beautiful, beautiful plants there, Angel. Uh, she says, on a warm night, <clears throat> there would be a light breeze and we would sit out on the patio and the smell of jasmine and the fragrant rose I had climbing up the house. Oh, that's lovely. Isn't that nice? I, I, I had the smell of jasmine outside. I mean, my sister's, I think my sister's got some climbing up the wall. And, you know, on occasions I've been sitting next to her on a bench where she lives up in um, Link, uh, uh, Woodall Spa in Lincolnshire. But now and again, you know, so you sit there, oh, and then you hear her, oh, here she goes again, dear, you know. And the smell of my sister comes across as she lets out another one. Oh, it's awful. It's just awful. It really is. Oh, dear. <clears throat> Daniel says, I didn't look at page three. It used to make me, what? <laughs> I can't read that out. Brand, I think Brandon disappeared now. <laughs> Brandon's dis he, it was too much for him staying up so long. <laughs> Christ. He must just get up for a couple of minutes each day. I reckon that's what happens, don't you? Just two minutes of, of, of eye open and then he's gone again. Um... <clears throat> So, yes, I did uh, uh, DJ at Colours last night, which is in uh, Basildon in Essex. Uh, oh, dreadful journey. I mean, there must have been all the cars. Now, this journey, right, I can, I got home from Basildon hour and a quarter. No problem. That's not going too fast. Uh, and a little bit fast. Not too fast. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> hour and a quarter. To get there, two hours and 15 bloody minutes. Oh, it must have been the, the busiest day of the year for travelling. Uh, actually, they did warn us on the news. So I left, well, I mean, an hour and a quarter. I left an hour and, no, I left at a quarter to seven for nine o'clock. And I got there at eight minutes past nine. I was supposed to start at nine. Oh, no, I, was hate my, I hate myself when I'm late. Very, very rarely late. Hardly ever. Um, there's not a lot I could do. So I was very, very disappointed with myself. I don't suppose they, it even bothered them, really, to be honest. And um, so I set up and we did the... Oh, it was so hot in there. God's sake, it was really, really hot in that club last night. So, you know, I opened another couple of buttons on the old shirt. It didn't seem to attract anyone. I don't know why. But um, I, I did open a couple of buttons. Huh? <laughs> Finished that at three o'clock and went home. But there was no microphone, so I, I didn't have a microphone last night. I just had to play the music. <clears throat> and um, that was it. Miserable, miserable bloke working behind the bar. Hardly said a word. Do you know what I mean? I, I do, there are certain people, and actually there's another place I work at. Where another, I don't want to give the game away too much. Uh, uh, there, is, there is a new member of staff. He is as miserable as sin. You know, and this is the front line between customers. You know what I mean? It's the front line. Why are you in that job? You've got to be happy and nice to customers in those sort of jobs. I think a lot of businesses are making the mistake now that people who, who might actually be good... Well, well I know one... I, I know another one who seems to be completely hopeless with numbers, but he's, he's you know, in quite a good position, quite an important position. But I think businesses a lot of the time put more emphasis on perhaps qualifications and numbers rather than people skills. And that's, that's the second one now that I've come across recently. What is going on with this air conditioning? Just a minute. Maybe if I just turn it turn it up, turn a bit or up a bit, because it's getting a bit cold in here. Um, they put in place people 
who cut costs or are good with numbers or are good in the office. But when they come out towards customers and indeed their staff, they're really bad. I mean, really bad. And you know, when you're working for them, you say nothing. As soon as you leave, you can start saying things because it doesn't matter then. You can actually tell them what an arsehole they are. Perhaps in not so many words. And it's of my opinion that I don't think these people actually get anywhere. They stay miserable and lonely and depressed for years and years, being nasty to everyone that works for them or works with them. You know, doesn't necessarily have to be a management position. Maybe you're just on the same level as anyone else. But they're just nasty to people around them. Or, or they just don't know how to talk to people. And it's of my opinion that these people don't actually get anywhere or start losing awful lots of money. Because they actually aren't as good as what they think they are. And now and again, perhaps someone will say something to them. And for a very, very brief period, they change. And they start being nice again. And then something happens, they get the ump again, and they start being nasty again. You know, why, oh, why are these people in situations where they deal with the public and members of staff? You must have people skills if you want to get somewhere. Underneath it, you've got to be a nice person. Don't you just fronting out and being horrible to people and all the time, you know, because eventually you will slip up or someone will slip you up. No one likes nasty people. I don't know how we got into that subject. <laughs> Terry H wants to know, how can Brandon sleep in this heat? Yeah, I want to know that as well. But he's obviously gone to sleep because we haven't heard a peep out of him for the last 10 minutes. That's it, he's gone, mate. Oh, hang on a minute, he says... No, no, he's... Da uh, Brandon, you're messaging me all over the place. Over there, over there. Can we just stick to one method of communication? Skype. Thank you. He now says, I haven't disappeared. What, not in a cloud of smoke or anything like that? <laughs> Daniel says, I'm, t I'm too hot here. Can I come round and sit in the air conditioner studio? No. <clears throat> Well, not have anyone in the studio while I'm doing my practice. It doesn't work. That really doesn't work. I've tried these two people shows. They're not for me. You know, when I'm doing a show, I'm talking. You know, people keep interrupting. Ron is the worst one, isn't he? Oh, God, yeah. Chat, 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 chat. I've stopped introducing him to people now, you know, because you'll be having it. And say, oh, this is Ronnie. And then he starts. That's it. You might as well go home then. Can't get a word in edgeways. And he goes on and on and on. That's caused a couple of fights, you know, between me and him. When he goes on and on and on. On and on. on. Now, don't... I can tell you that today. Because he's on holiday at the moment in Turkey. 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 What is that noise that they make, some of them? In their conversations, isn't it? Anyway, he's in Turkey at the moment, so I can tell you that. We have had a couple of fights over the years. Not recently. Now, I get fed up, I walk off. That's it. Walk off. I'll give it a rest. I'm like that with me. Shut up. On and on and on and on. Uh, Terry H says, yes, I'm coming round too to sit in your office. No, we're not having anyone round here. The gate's down on the front door. I just push a button and this gate locks down on all the windows and everything. You're not coming round here to sit in my air conditioning office, thank you very much. <laughs> and Daniel, go and clear out, clear, clear that that <clears throat> cat stuff that's outside your front door that I saw when I was walking past earlier. Awful. So that was colours last night. Very nice. Uh, finished that. Nice people. Nice people in there. And it went quite well. So I'm doing the fourth fourth Friday of of the month in there now. So looking forward to that. And um, before that, <clears throat> it was a busy day yesterday. I did an awful lot of driving yesterday. So there was the two and a quarter hours there. There was one and a quarter hours back. Then during the daytime, there was an hour and a quarter hours to go uh, into London. And about an hour and a half coming out. So awful lot of driving yesterday. Um, 
I went to uh, the hospital yesterday where they go and check my blood every now and again for a little thing I've got. You'll never guess. You will never... Terry H might guess. Terry, you can see if you can guess and I'll say yes or no. All right. Um, yes, so it's a little little blood thing. I, I generally go every three months. And they take some blood and they look at it. Then he calls me up. Then, then I go in uh, about a week or two later. Uh, Hello, Chris. And he taps on the computer and says, yeah, mum, mum, mum. yeah, that's all looking fine. See you in three months. That's generally what happens, okay? And um, so they took me blood. Uh, on the way out of there, um, I uh, uh, I thought, oh, I fancy some bread rolls, you know, to go home. Now, I don't buy sandwiches and that usually when I'm out. Very rare I buy a cheese roll or anything like that. And I went in this baker's and they've got all the sandwiches. I said, have you got any bread rolls? He said, yes. Um... He said, which ones would you like? I said, oh, have you got white ones, please? And he, he pulled out this little drawer, and there was lots of beautiful rolls in there. And they, they actually look quite much bigger than they do in the supermarket. And um, uh, they... Uh, there was a, he said, there was only one white one. Do you want a brown one? I said, yeah, that's okay. He said, how many do you want all together? I said, three, please. Um, so I had one white one. One brown one and a granary one. And he put them in a bag and he said, I nearly fell in. Now, this is in Hampstead, right? The Royal Free Hospital is there and Hampstead is the area that's in. And I says, um, how much is that, mate? And, you know, got a couple of pounds out of my pocket. And he's like, that's £2.40, please. I thought, Jesus Christ, 80 pence per roll? Are you taking the mick or what? 80 pence per roll? Bloody hell, I thought. <laughs> £2.40 for three rolls. I mean, they were larger and they smelt nice and all that. No, oh, completely wrong, Terry. <laughs> they did smell nice, but £2.40 for three rolls. Jesus, you, that's even dearer than Waitrose. You get three for a pound in there. Nice rolls as well. When, 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 there was nothing wrong. Don't get me wrong. These weren't horrible. They were very nice. But 80 pence a roll. Hampstead, you see. Hampstead, that's why. Sometimes Ronnie comes up the hospital with us. He might take us. And then often we pop into a little place called Dominique's for a vegetarian breakfast. And that's nice. I think £5.95, baked beans, um, those uh, fried potato things, what are they called? I don't know, fried potato things, mushrooms, you get half a tomato, four bits of toast, Linda McCartney vegetarian sausages, a couple of eggs. And that's, that's, that's really nice, but I didn't really have the time yesterday. I looked at the... Actually, I was in and out of the hospital ever so quickly. I went in there, took a ticket, they took me bloods, and I was out 15 minutes. No wait, and there was no queue either. How fabulous is that? Anyway, same hospital... A little while ago, you remember, I had my a camera up the nose. You remember the camera up the nose the second time? Do you remember that? Yes. And um, I just got a letter back yesterday. <clears throat> um, and this is like a copy of the letter that came back from the... Um, uh, uh, the camera up the nose doctor <laughs> what do you call them ear nose and throat that's it ear nose and throat doctor so he would have sent this to my special doctor right okay and it says thank you see if you can make head a tailor this old this load of old crap thank you for referring this 50 year old patient well i'm happy with that he's already taken a year off thank you very much thank you for referring this 50 year old patient who i saw at the ent clinic today Right. He has a history of sensation of something stuck in his throat, as well as occasional dysphonia. There is no dysphagia as such. I know he is. Oh, is this something else? I don't, don't want me to read that. Out. Uh, there is a degree of nasal obstruction with possibly hay fever. OK. So th this is, and, and I'm, you know, this, this, this throat sensation is still there I can put my hand there now and it's slightly raised that gland there 
It goes on to say, examination revealed. Uh, revealed. <laughs> Rhinitic mucosa, but there was no polyps in nasal cavity. Post-nasal space was clear on flexible nasendoscopy. Fibre optic laryngoscopy showed the vocal cords to be symmetrically mobile on phonation and inspiration with no nodules of ulcera or ulcerations. There is, there was some enterotenoid and epiglottic erythema usually seen in laryngopharyngeal reflux Christ knows what all these words are I reassured the patient I could find no abnormalities at present his symptoms seem to sit well with globus Fal Fariangus. I advised him on diet and inc that he, he was telling me not to have too much spicy stuff. That was the diet thing. And increased fluid intake as well as Gavis Gaviscon Advance, which you, you saw that a couple of weeks ago. I got that out. I advised him on voice rest and saline nasal douches. Uh, <laughs> I have not arranged a routine follow up in ENT, but would we'll be pleased to see him again should there be additional concerns. Yours sincerely. He hasn't even he hasn't even bloody signed it, lazy bastard. Hasn't even signed it. So there we are. That's the uh, news. That's the news about the old throat. So it's a mystery. Discharged from everywhere. They can't find anything wrong. Nothing wrong, so I'm not going to worry too much. Thank you very much. Um, Terry H says, I don't want to say dear. Oh, that means you know anyway. anyway. Uh, he says, I've started saying dear far too much. Why is that dear? Have you really? No, keep saying it, love. We like it. Keep saying dear. Brandon says, fried potato things. You mean hash browns. Yeah, I think I do mean hash browns, actually. Must be the hash browns. <laughs> Daniel, you need to... You, no, completely wrong, Daniel. Absolutely wrong. Uh, good morning to Jimmy Butler. Nephew Jimmy Butler, who is here for my weekly mention. Where is it? <laughs> Good morning, Jimmy Butler. Whose insurance... Have you got your car insurance? It's nearly in place. Oh, he's got that a bargain at just £2,100-odd pounds. Jesus Christ. Jim, do you know what... Jimmy, do you know what I want to know what my um, car insurance is? Hang on. Let me look in my filing cabinet. Just a moment. <coughs> car insurance... My car insurance file. My moment, please. Oh, yes, we've got filing cabinet here with my bits and pieces in it. That was Ronnie's idea. I was, I, I'm not good at filing things and all that. I'm really not. Hang on a minute. Now, oh, where's this going to be? Oh, there's loads of old insurance. Oh, I'm never going to find this, am I? Might be easier for me to look it up on my accounts program. Oh, hang on a minute. What's this? <coughs> oh, yeah, here we are. There's the certificate. Oh, it don't say how much I paid, though. Let me see. Caring for your car. What's that there? No, I've got my... Um... Oh, what's that on the floor? That might be, is that it? Boop, boop. Please. Please, Mummy. Oh, I can't find it now. Do you want to know what it is, Jim? It's not here, that's just the certificate. I've got all these news stories I typed off today, and um, no, it's not on there. Uh, so, when was it? Back in there. What's fallen on the floor here? Oh, hang on, what's that from the AA? No, I'm not with the AA, am I? Right. That's just the punt dry I called them out for. Hang on a minute, Jim, I'll tell you what my car insurance is. One moment, please. Boop, boop. Sorry? Please, mummy. Car insurance. One moment, please. Now, when did I say May? Did I have that renewed in May? Here we are. <laughs> oh, dear. Jim. 
Jim, my car insurance fully comp on my th- on my two and a half year old car, two hundred and sixty nine pounds and fifteen pence. Gring. How'd you feel now, nephew? <laughs> oh dear. Don't worry, Jim. Only another eight, seventeen, twenty seven, thirty seven, forty seven, forty seven. Only another 34 years to wait and you can get yours that cheap. How fabulous is that? (laughs) Oh, yes. Jimmy says uh, if he was to do his insurance on his own, okay, it would be, bing, £2,700. Jesus Christ, how can anyone afford that? You know, that's how many months' wages would that be for you, Jim? Two thousand. I think you get about. <clears throat> how much do you get a week? Can you tell me how much money you get a week? Wages. Jimmy works at um, my nephew. He's uh, seventeen. He works as a car. Um, what do you call it now? Um, fixing fixing the metal on the. Oh, what's that called now? Fixing the metal on the car. Uh, Body works, that's it. But <laughs> let's be honest, we could all do with a little bit of body works, couldn't we, eh? Can you do anything with my face, Jim? Can you sand that down a bit and get rid of the wrinkles? <laughs> eh? A little bit of filler in here, a bit of filler in there. How much you get a week, Jim? I'd like to know that so I can work out how much, <coughs> how much week for week that's going to be. Anyway, if he wanted insurance on his own, it would be £2,700, but he's gone on with his dad as a driver, £2,000. £2,000 a year. That's shocking. So, hang on. So, your insurance, £2,700, and you get oh, your apprentice, so only £140 a week. So, it would take you... Is that right? 19, 19.2 times what do you say 140 okay <laughs> if you, are you ready for this jim you probably didn't work this out if you <clears throat> had to buy the 2700 pound insurance it would take you 20 weeks to pay that back there's only 52 bloody weeks in a year 20 week that is it's bloody scandalous isn't it that's really oh i haven't sung happy birthday to angel yet sorry that's absolutely scandalous why is it that a young person has to work for 20 weeks out of 52 just to pay the bloody car insurance greedy bastards oh they really are greedy bastards not just them you know the electric people the gas people the water people everyone is so greedy now It's only me that I give away money left, right and centre. I really do. Do you know, every Sunday, Jim, every Sunday, when I'm in that church, I put another little fiver in the envelope and post it in the little church uh, 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 collection plate as that came around. I did the collection the other week, did I tell you? Oh, yes. You know, and, you know, the the difference in church to those... Charity people that stand in the streets, you know, generally this basket or uh, it's not basket, it's like a thing with a handle. It comes around, you put your money in, right? Um, And, you know, if you don't put any money in, that's fine. It goes to the next person. That's fine. Well, I don't do it like that. You know, I I take take the little money collector to and I bloody well stand in front until they put something in it. And then I, I, you know, I check some of them. They think and I don't think I'm blooming stupid. You know, what they do is they get a handful of one pence coins and then but plonk them in, thinking that I will think that that's a lot gotten in. But I know the different sounds. You know, if it's a fairly silent sound that's going in the um, in the collection thing, then I know that it's a note. And I, and I smile at the person and I walk on to the next one. You know, no problem at all. If I think just a few, you know, copper coins have gone, I will stand there until more is put in tight bastards come on <laughs> get that money in the collection plate Coll- the collections in my church have gone up substantially since i started collecting them i st- and i stand there like that when my arms folded and I, if they you know they put the coins in and then they try and hand me back the collection thing 
I stand there with my arms folded and look at them until they put a decent amount of cash in that bloody thing. I'll tell you that now. I mean, some of them don't come back after that, but that's their problem, you know, if they don't want to put money in. We're not running a free service, for Christ's sake. <laughs> Trains. They're another greedy lot, aren't they? The train companies. Christ, how much is it to go on a train now? It's even dearer than 80 pence a roll. Um, Jimmy says, I got a pay, I get a pay rise in September. Oh, to how much? Do you know? What, to 145, 150? Or is it quite a large pay rise? Do you get more when you get to 18? Here, Jim, if you, <laughs> if you save up your money, you'll be able to take me on holiday next year. How does that sound? Well, I hope we'll be going in the special seats and those planes again. Thank you very much. Eh? <laughs> People won't have a clue what I'm going about now. Where where we're sitting on a plane, there's like a like a you push a button and a little window goes up. We're playing with that for hours, hours and hours of fun. Uh, Jim says you're like the vicar of Dibley. Well, you got to stand there. You got to stand there until they ca and that cash over. Terry H says I think Uncle Chris. Um, should pay for Jimmy's insurance. Are you having a laugh? There's no money growing on trees in here. Barely got a few potatoes out of the ground the other day. If you saw that video, did you see my potatoes video, Terry? Did you? That was one plant that was. We got a few, no, and they're nice potatoes. But I did notice they got scabs on them. But there's no, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, you just you get your um, your uh, you just peel the potato basically, peel the scabs off, and that's the end of that. And then you cook them. They're fine. They're fine. You know, you'd probably do the same with the scabs on your face, Terry. Just just get one of those potato peelers and shave them off. They'd be fine. <laughs> um, Daniel says, give the clock a shot. Oh, is that stopped? Why does that? Do you know that only ever stops on a Saturday? I think there must be a spirit in here that stops that clock. Stops that clock every Saturday afternoon while I'm in here. Maybe it's my voice, you know, the, the power of the voice that comes up and hits the pendulum and stops it spinning from one to the <coughs> one side to the other. Do you reckon? Right, Angel, come on, we must sing happy birthday to Angel because she is uh, it's her 60th birthday today. Where's my tune? Here we go, here we go. birthday to you happy birthday dear angel happy birthday to you there we are oh 60th birthday today happy birthday angel and what will i do on my 60th birthday i might do a special show a, a little special show on my 60th birthday i'm hoping to still be here and to still sit here chatting nonsense to you Several times a week. I might have retired by then, I don't know. And if I retire, I will just find even more things to talk about and sit here and chat to you. I will, yes. Um, <clears throat> I you know, I treated myself to a new razor blade today. Oh, I've really pushed the boat out for the show this morning. Look, we've got a nice, nice red and white shirt. And I actually wore this last night, to be honest, at, uh, at Colours. I had all the buttons done, undone. You know, I look very, very sexy. I couldn't take my eyes off myself in the in the reflect. In fact, I had my mobile phone. I had my mobile phone, and it was switched to camera mode, and I just held it in front of myself for the whole night, looking at myself in the mobile phone. <laughs> eh? Oh, I saw that program again. Uh, the Secret Life of Students. Did anyone see that? <clears throat> and uh, it was the last one. And that, uh, you know that girl, Brenda, I told you, the one with virtually no personality. And what, did she, what is it? She wants to do something like, um, oh, she wants to do relationship counselling. <laughs> and she said this on the programme, she wants to do relationship. Well, I howled out laughing. Don't you have to have a bit of a personality to do that? Because she's another one. She's, got, she's as miserable as sin and spends her entire life tweeting and texting people. That's on the bloody phone all the time. A little bit like my nephew Jimmy was in Florida. 
constantly checking his his Facebook because you know he's so popular with all these people sending him messages constantly. Twenty four. I don't think he slept. Maybe that's why. That's the thing that with the young people now, they haven't got time to sleep because they've got so many messages to deal with as they come through. Brandon, for example. That must be what it is. That's why Brandon doesn't sleep because his young person and other young people are constantly texting him all the time with an, an inane bits of information such as, I've just got up. I'm just having dinner. I'm just about to go to the toilet. I was in the toilet for 10 minutes. I'm just going to brush my teeth at the same time as I'm in the toilet as I'm taking so long to go. Is that what it is? Anyway, so this Brenda girl, she's just no personality there. And she's miserable. Miserable. I don't think I saw her smile once in the two episodes of The Secret Life of Students. But when she said, I want to be a relationship counsellor, I thought, no, you can't be. You've got to have a personality to do that, love. You've got to bring people together. You can't just sit there looking as miserable as bloody sin to do something like that, can you? You can't do that. No need for what, Terry? What have I done wrong now? <laughs> what, did I say something wrong, Terry? What have I said there's no need for what? What have I said? Daniel says your singing can stop a clock. I'm sure it probably can. Tick tock, tick tock. On the way home from, um, yeah, just a nice new razor blade. Look at that, eh? Very clean shave today. Got my razor blades from, um, uh, where was it? Asda, actually. Asda. They're quite cheap in there. I think you get like five for a couple of quid or something like that. I don't buy the Wilkinson ones and all that business anymore. Why are they? How is it like 20 quid for five razors in some of these places? Have you seen them? Little five cartridge razors, like 20 quid, outrageous. Outrageous. Um, on the way home, I went to uh, uh, BP Garage. I fancied a bag of fruit, cheese and onion crisps on the way home last night. Because that's like a thing in colours. There's nothing to eat. No crisps, no nuts, nothing. Which is a bit odd, isn't it, for a pub? So on the way home, I stopped at a um, BP Garage... And it's very, very annoying. And this has happened a couple of times when you go, usually you can't get in there, right? The doors are closed, but you go to the little window if you want to pay for something. <clears throat> and can I have a bag of crisps? Oh, no, we're not doing food. Or well, why not? And then they point, they just point to a sign on the window. Fuel sours only. Now, why is that? And it's not all garages, just occasional. And I'll tell you why it is, shall I? Because they're too bloody lazy to get off of their fat asses and walk round the shop to the crisp section, pick up a bag of crisps and walk back. And the only reason they've got to do that is because they lock the doors because they're frightened of being hurt. You know, frightened someone's going to come in there with a shotgun and say, give me the money. That's why it's locked, I suppose. <clears throat> Most of them will actually get up from their chairs, walk round, get your crisps, your sandwich, your drink, whatever, whatever you want, and then they go back to their little seats again. But occasionally you get these lazy gits, usually actually in the Shell stations. It was unusual, but it happened in a BP station the other day. And that's unusual. Usually it's the Shell stations. They've got a little note, 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 note up there. An Asian man. It's not, always an Asian man, isn't it? Isn't that strange? Why is that? Don't the British want these dogs, jobs? I don't know why that is. It's an Asian man sitting there and they just, they don't even talk to you. They just shake their heads and point at a sign. No food sales. Oh, you, you lazy bastard. You know, what if I had um, something like, what's, the, what's that disease where you have to eat something? Don't you have to eat? You, might, you, you do a blood test and you have to eat something. I can't remember what that is now. If something drops too low. You know, what if I had something like that? 
so lazy. I do, do hate them. I do hate them. Anyway, I'm going to go now, boys and girls. Did you cut your chin? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A little cut my chin. Look at that. Sorry. A little cut on my chin. I just wanted to ask you, uh, before I go, a little little technical question here. A little technical question, boys and girls. Um, let me just do my... Uh, That's it. Another technical question. Just before I go, if you, if you could send us a message or something. Those of you watching the live show, you know when you're watching the picture, is it quite smooth or just, is it jittery? How far is it off watching the telly? Because when I look at my monitor in front of me, it's a bit jittery. You know, if I move my hand from one side to the other, it's not exactly smooth. Is, do you see that? Is that the same for you? Or is it smooth for you? And I'm not quite sure whether it's my monitor or the way the show goes out. I won't be able to change it anyway. It's already switched to high definition. OK, but when I move, for example, my hand from one side to the other, is that quite smooth? And could you let me know, please? All right. Anyway, that's it uh, for today, boys and girls. Thank you very much for watching and listening to the show. Well done, Brandon. If you manage to stay awake for the entire show, I am very impressed. Terry is always awake. Daniel is always awake for the whole show as well, OK? If you've been watching the recording, thank you very much. Um, do check out my daily videos. You can see them if you go to the top of my brand new website, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. At the top there, you'll find a link to all the videos and uh, everything else is on that newly designed website as well, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And if you'd like to send an email, the email address is also chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, Daniel said it looks okay to me. And Terrian says it's very smooth, streaming in HD. So obviously it's my uh, my monitor. Would that be my, um, <coughs> my video card? It's... It's a little bit jittery then. I think really, I was saying this to you the other day, wasn't it? I need to, because um, this is, it's a computer's about three years old, but it's quite a, a a powerful computer, this one. And what I really would need to do, uh, sometimes watching flash things and it starts to hesitate. And certainly sometimes when I fire up Chrome or, or any of the browsers, I've got, got them all on here, Chrome, uh, Mozilla, Mod Mozilla, Firefox, and, and uh, Internet Explorer, they all kind of hesitate a bit now. What I need to do is take it back to the factory settings and start again, don't I, really, to, to get it all up and running, but uh, it's just such a bloody hard work, and you, you put up with these things. I, I know it would work properly if I did that, but I can't be bothered to do it. You know, then you have to download all the drives and all that again. Oh, God, it's so boring. Time to go then, boys and girls. Uh, thank you very much for watching and listening. I'll see you again next Saturday at 12 o'clock UK time for another live show. And there'll be a short video, as always, on Monday. See you soon. Have a lovely Saturday. Bye-bye now.